Boston's famous for beans, San Francisco for cable cars, Hollywood for movies. What could you guess Ferguson, North Carolina, is known for? Answer doesn't pop right into your head? How about Morgan Shepard and hanging? Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Hang down your head and cry. Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Poor boy, you're bound to die. As the story goes, you know, Kingston Trio did a song, Tom Dooley, Hang Down Your Head. Uh, poor boy, you're bound to die. Um, and uh, what what happened, or, or as the legend goes, anyhow, Tom Dooley supposedly killed this woman, and it was on my grandfather's mountain, uh, which his name was Hill Allen. That's my mother's uh, daddy. And uh, uh, but the way my family knows the story is that Tom Dooley never actually killed a woman. Uh, what happened, Tom was going with these two women, and one of them, which was my great-great-aunt, and uh, uh, which was jealous of the other woman, and uh, she's the one that uh, got stabbed with a knife, and uh, Tom took the blame for it and, uh, uh, and hung for it. But uh, Tom was going with both ladies, and uh, of course them being jealous of each other, uh, one of them lost her life, and, uh, and you know, of course, we don't know for sure, but we understand that maybe uh, my great-great-aunt was the one that uh, had took her life, and, uh, and Tom's name never has been cleared, but, but there's been people that's done research on it and been trying to find out, you know, uh, trying to track down some of the history. But uh, I reckon that's uh, uh, the biggest thing that's ever happened in Ferguson, North Carolina, and uh, uh, that's where Morgan Shepherd come from that uh, drives for Sitco. Ferguson may have produced an innocent Tom Dooley for the hangman, but it also turned out one hell of a race driver for Winston Cup. Hi everyone, I'm Rusty Wallace. This is my place. Welcome. And this is Neil Bonnet's winner show. When Neil had his terrible wreck in 1989, he was racing for the Wood Brothers team. After several tryouts, the man who ultimately got Bonnet's slot with the team was none other than this week's winner, Morgan Shepard. He's what, 52, 53 now? With God knows how many laps, no pun intended, under his belt. Morgan had a lot of help along the way, and he hasn't forgotten him. I can remember one of the guys that helped me in racing. His name was Glenn Knight. He owned a junkyard, got a wife, and nine kids. And I remember blowing the engine one night, and, uh, and we was loading everything up, and he said, well, honey, you got to cut down the groceries this week. Uh, we got to get Morgan the engine for the car next week. So those were the, the kind of people, uh, the nice people that has helped me through racing. They was like me, they didn't have much. And just what kind of guy is he? For starters, a lean, mean mountain man who forgets neither friend or foe. A longtime dues payer who's had his ticket punched along every backstretch in stock car country. A hard liver who finally put the cork back in the bottle. A born again human being who never forgot where he's been. A guy with a big heart and a ready shoulder. A winner who knows the incredible price of admission to the charm circle. This is kind of how it's been with me. Everything I have in my life, I owe it to faith in God. Everything I have in life has been made possible through faith. Because of that faith, I've always known that if you hang in there long enough, work hard enough, I can make certain things happen. Today, I'm one of the happiest men alive. Neil Bonnet's Winners is brought to you by Allied Signal's Fram Filter Products. Fram, you can pay a little now or a lot later. And by Autolite Spark Plugs and Wire and Cable Products. Autolite Spark Plugs, guaranteed for two years no matter how far you go. Brought to you by 104 Plus. Octane Boost. Feel the power. There are some tracks on the stock car circuit where you can squeeze three abreast. Daytona is not one of them. Threesomes are a no-no most times. At Daytona, they're sheer madness. And this, fans, is how you instantly alter the course of a race. In all, 14 cars were forced from the biggest race of the year on lap 91. 
about a third of the field. The 21 car with Morgan Shepard aboard slipped through the mayhem. So did the 28 car with Davey Allison at the wheel. From here on in, it would be a duel in the sun between these two superb drivers. Not an equal duel, Morgan was coming up short. We was very lucky to, uh, uh, to finish the race that day. I know uh, early in the race that uh, I think Jeff Bodine and I got together, his car got sideways and got into mine and pinned me into the wall. And uh, our car banged around and, and bent the car up, knocked the rear end over a little bit. But the car still ran good all day. Uh, Eddie and the guys worked on it very hard. And uh, uh, we really had a, a good shot at winning the race. It didn't make no difference. Uh, how much I tried, I would get up to him, but I couldn't get to where I could pull up beside him to do anything with him. You live by the draft, you die by the draft. Morgan knows it. He's one of the best in the business. And at Daytona on this day, he died by it. Which brings us to Shepard's envy spot on the Woods Brothers team. How did they ever find each other? At the time that we got him, um, he was leaving Bud Moore. And, um, Dale Jarrett was leaving us, and um, it was kind of one of them deals like if you had five minutes to pick you a race car driver, you know, who, who do you think you'd get the job done? And Morgan Shepard. I was born to race a car, Morgan once said, be that as it may. Morgan Shepard had to drive a lot of race cars to prove it, a lot of them clunkers, through seasons that felt like they'd never end. Nowadays, Morgan can trade horror stories with the best of them, and he can laugh a little bit. I was 12 years old. I bought my first car, and uh, uh, that's the one I gave uh, two flying squirrels, a gray squirrel, and a 20-gauge shotgun for, uh, and 12 dollars and a half. And uh, I learned the mechanic on it, and I would take it apart and put it together. And so, uh, by the time I was uh, 26 years old, uh, I, I decided somehow or another I was going to get me a race car together. So anyhow, I had a friend by the name of Smut Deal. <laughs> old Smut had this old uh, dirt car that he ran at Hickory Speedway, and he asked me to drive it because everybody knew I, I liked to drive fast, and uh, I didn't have any license from 16 to 25, and uh, so I needed somewhere to drive fast anyhow. By the time he found a home with the Woods Brothers in 1991, he would have driven for 28 different owners, including himself. I don't know. Uh, the exact count of uh, how many people I have driven for, but, uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, my way of breaking into racing uh, has been a lot different than what, say, Jeff Gordon or uh, my friend Kyle Petty, because Kyle was born into it, you know. Uh, I didn't have uh, the money background or, or the friends, I didn't, I didn't have the friends that, uh, that had the money to get me into racing. In 75, this guy couldn't even make his $86 mortgage payment. By 77, he was selling off furniture from his upholstery shop so he could make the fall race at Martinsville. If NASCAR had an award for perseverance, it was a gimme that Morgan Shepard would have permanent possession of this trophy. It had been a long road to hoe on the way up from the pits, but the pot of gold was there waiting when Morgan arrived. His 1970 NASCAR earnings, $965. His 1993 take, a whopping three quarters of a million. Lifetime, the man from Conover passed the career $5 million mark in 1994. Not bad return on an investment of two flying squirrels, a gray squirrel, a 20 gauge shotgun, and 12 and a half bucks. No more skating on thin ice for this boy. What about that dream? This is a dream come true. Uh, because it could have never happened, you know. But if it wouldn't have, I would have still stood right there and I would have done the best I could uh, because there is lots of guys out there that it, it never happens for, but a lot of them that it don't happen for is because they gave up. Brought to you by Stanley. Since 1843, Stanley has been helping people do things right. And by... Penzoil, the motor oil you can rely on for performance, protection, and quality.
Hi, welcome back to Neil Bonnet's Winners and this week's show about Morgan Shepherd. You know, there's a lot of different styles and ways of helping your fellow man. Then, there's Morgan Shepherd's way, and it speaks for itself. Well, you wasn't feeling too good? Yeah. Hang it up. Let's <laughs> see. Doing all right? Morgan and he have been buddies from the first time he headed up to the Virginia mountains with a motorhome full of Christmas goodies. Round about Christmas time every year, Morgan starts up his motorhome and begins his special rounds. You see, he has one special fan. But again, why not let's just watch. Okay, you gotta put money in the top of it, see? Yeah. Then you can see how much money you got. It's already got more than it was. Let me just say her name is Betty. She's 55, and she's been that way since childhood. These are mountain folk for the most part, and Morgan's kind of people. The first time that I remember my father was, uh, and I'm not sure exactly, but it's probably somewhere along three and a half years old. My, I can remember my mother saying, your dad, there he's coming home. And uh, I remember him coming, walking down the dirt road, and uh, he had just got out of prison. He'd been in prison for a year, and uh, way of life back in the mountains, uh, most of the people, or a lot of the people, was moonshiners. And uh, that was uh, one of the things that my dad did. Uh, he made moonshine, and, and unfortunately, uh, he got uh, caught, or maybe fortunately, or whatever, and, and he had to serve some time for it. It would be my guess that along about here is where Morgan got his first taste of Christmas and his enduring and special feel for what it means to get left out. Somewhere between four and five years old, uh, I can remember uh, probably the only toy that uh, I ever got for Christmas. And, uh, you know, I feel very fortunate that uh, to live in a country such as we do, uh, to, uh, to have the choices of being able to work hard and, uh, and try to make a way for yourself. But uh, uh, we didn't have that much. I had this little yellow wind-up bulldozer, and that's the only Christmas present I can ever remember getting because my family just couldn't uh, uh, afford much. That's in sharp contrast to what the Shepherd family of today can afford. Now he has all the toys he could ever possibly want, which is, of course, not what he wants. One of my favorite sayings is, to dream of the person you'd like to be is to waste the person that you really are. But you know, that's what life is about, is improving the person that you really are. That's quite a mouthful from one of racing's legendary Hellraisers. So why and when the change of heart? February the 23rd, 1975, um, that's when I become a born-again Christian. You know, I think sometimes God lets us uh, get ourselves to our lowest point in our life. And um, I remember I went to Daytona and, and I came back home. My wife had left me and uh, I said, well, I'll just live it up now, you know. And uh, uh, I found me this girl and, and went out with her and, and uh, I drank quite a bit and, and uh, was having a good time, what I thought was a good time, you know. but. And, and when you're drinking and all that, all this, you know, is fun. But then when you wake up the next day, you don't feel so good, you know. Uh, and I got to thinking, well, if this is so much fun and I'm having such a good time, how come I feel so bad in the mornings, you know? So I started taking a serious look at my life and um, I, 
I sent the girl back home, and uh, and I remember on Tuesday night, uh, I was uh, in my little house, uh, and uh, I fell down on my knees, and I started praying to God that he would take all this off of me, because I was so miserable uh, with uh, the way I was living. I just, uh, uh, there was no happiness there, you know. And uh, and the time I got done, I felt like I could jump through the ceiling. Uh, that was the turning point in my life. And now it's time for a visit to Neil Bonnet's Winner's Gallery and this week's Fram Future winner, Jeff Burton. He's a young man who believes the secret path to Victory Lane is through brain power, not just horsepower. I get aggressive when I need to get aggressive. Uh, other than that, I try to win races with my head. You don't, you know, there's not many races wrong with your fenders and your, and your noses and stuff, knocking them off other cars. If you can use your head and keep yourself in position all day long to win the race, you're gonna win your share of races. There comes a time when you gotta get really aggressive, and there's also a time when you need to be very passive, and it's sorting those two things out gets tough sometimes, but that's what I like to try to do. Jeff's a native of South Boston, Virginia, who began racing go-karts at age eight. He's been careful to pick his role models carefully. Look up to to people that have consistently won in the Winston Cup Series. I mean, that's a, that's a tremendous feat when you can do that. But a person like Mark Martin, who is a nice guy, who is not, doesn't have his heads in the clouds because he's been, he's been successful, he understands where he came from. He remembers laying on the ground and turning uh, bolts and, and doing the stuff it took to you know, win races 20 years ago. Uh, that's the kind of guy that I want to be. I don't want to you know, have my heads up in, in, the, in the clouds and forget where I came from. I'd like to be successful, and if I could pattern myself after a Mark Martin, that's what I'd like to do. And Jeff's a future winner who knows there's no such thing as overnight success. A person that comes in here expecting to win overnight is in for a long career. It, it takes a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, uh, and it really, a lot of people don't understand how much the mental part of this sport is. If, if a person can take the bad times and learn why things went bad and turn it into good things, and that's the person that's going to be successful. He's got the tools, he's got the talent, and the common sense it takes to go all the way. Jeff Burton, this week's Fram Future winner. If it got any closer, you need earplugs. Morgan Shepard just loves his animals. He's got this feeling for just about anything on four legs. Dogs, raccoons, cats, you name them. He's either had them or is getting them. How come you want the mic? Huh? Say. Have a marshmallow. You want a marshmallow? He's a good boy. Come here, Shep. Come here, Shep. Come in here, boy. Come on. Okay. Come up here with Sid Coke. Come here. Come here, boy. Come up here, Sid Coke. Come here. Good marshmallow. We're going to do a marshmallow commercial here. <laughs> Sitco, show them how good that marshmallow is. That's good, ain't it? We're going to have a marshmallow uh, advertisement on my bush car next week now. Sitco, Sitco loves them. <laughs> See if I got any more in my pocket. No more. Uh, he didn't lose the camera piece. Sitco ate it. <laughs> he took it right off my chest, found it. Didn't you, boy? You're rotten. Here, have a nut instead. One's bigger than the other. They're five weeks. Good little baby. They're five weeks old. And, and believe it or not, yeah. What are they? Squirrels. Squirrels. <laughs> they uh, uh, they make great pets. I've uh, I've raised them to where uh, they're just like puppy dogs, and uh, they follow me through the woods and follow me right back to the house. And uh, so this is the way you got to do. You got to raise them from babies. These has been bottle fed. There's a lot about Morgan Shepherd that speaks for itself, and it's the kind of stuff legends and ballads are made of. 
Maybe one day, there'll be a famous song about the other man from Ferguson, North Carolina. In the meantime, people like me and Dale and Kyle have to face the fact that Morgan's gonna be in a bunch more winter circles before he hangs it up. Well, that's it for this week's edition of Winners, Neil Bonnet's Winners. Thanks, folks. Neil Bonnet's Winners is brought to you by Allied Signal's Fram Filter Products. Fram, you can pay a little... Bernstein in his quest for a top field championship. Promotional consideration provided by Allied Signal's Bendix Brakes, the best-known name in brakes.